that, bro. In this video, we're gonna be playing the next map. Put your flights in the back. So I have here a lovely, lovely aircraft. A warrior. Man, I've got a couple hours in one of these things, I gotta say. And the one downside, and it always makes me a little crazy, is you just don't get the sensation of how much effort this thing takes to actually go back in order to make it actually grow up. But again, it's just one of those little things. Well, that being said, this is a really neat plane. It's perfect for example today. So you're probably saying, well, what's XMapsy? Well, XMapsy is actually this neat little third-party tool that basically enables you to connect your um, electronic flight bags, like ForeFlight or something like that, directly into Flight Sim. And it also has another couple of little features. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and call it up real fast. Let's go ahead and take a peek at it. So this is what happens uh, when you load it up. It says, you know, it gives you some warnings. Don't forget that you have the correct notes and everything like that. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten this backwards when I'm trying to get that program, but that's probably the video. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. There's this little button. You right click, hit the settings thing, and it pops up. It gives you a bunch of different options. Again, if you look for like a video that kind of goes to some details, we can do all these things as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of scroll my way down. And there's this neat little thing. This is GPX, KML, and vlogging. So, so I'm going to click this button right here. We're going to go with this one. I'm going to go ahead and click this little button, which gives you the ability to go ahead and save this one on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dump this sucker up on my good old-fashioned desktop there. There's no reason why I need to put this in a crazy spot. I'm going to press OK, and it's going to go save a file there. So I'm going to press save changes and what it's going to do is it's going to reopen it and now it's recording my flight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little uh, rip around the pattern here. It's always kind of fun to do that. Uh, we're right off the Florida coast here, by the way, today. I needed something a little bit sunnier and of course, uh, good old flight sim puts me on the wrong runway for this to take off. But uh, I'm not arguing too much. I'm not arguing. It just means it's going to take a life. This is kind of a nice runway. I'm actually surprised. The fun thing is on this plane, you always have to pull back really far, but then all of a sudden it catches and it bounces in the air. It's kind of hang on to it. It's another one of those planes that you really, really, really have to make sure that you get the trim set up correctly, otherwise it's going to be quite cheap. I'm going to go ahead and reset my trim here. Fix it. Oh, much, much, much better. We're just going to hold 80 knots. Like I said, this is just this is demonstrating how the theory itself works. So we're going to go ahead and do ourselves a big old donut, and then we're going to come back around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking a nice kind of early turn and I'll just kind of take it all the way around. Okay, yeah, so we're going to make this one pretty ugly just for the purposes of the Google map in a minute. It's going to go right. It's looking a lot better than it was, but like I said, I'm just trying to make this. We only need to go up to about a thousand feet here because, uh, again, local altitude, as you can tell by the presence of a tremendous amount of ocean all around us, is going to be relatively low as far as patterns go. So I'm just going to kind of pull that last up, those last couple feet, suck the last bit of energy out of this airplane, although it looks like I've already done it. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and level ourselves back down. Click over here for just a second. Looks good, looks good. I like how it's all coming out of one speaker now. Gotta love that. That looks pretty good right there. Go ahead and pull that throttle back. Go ahead and let the nose come down. One of the greatest things about this airplane in the real world is that once you kind of get it the way you want it, all you have to do is basically play the um, uh, manifold pressure game here a little bit. Uh, I usually think about 20 inches. Does a pretty good job. And go ahead and pull one notch of flaps right away. I'm going to confirm to make sure the foot here already down, which I started them down, so I'm not too, too worried about that. And yes, I misspoke. This is not a warrior. This is indeed an arrow. They certainly look alike, though. Pop down that next notch. Pull that throttle back a little tiny bit. And we're just going to go ahead and bring ourselves into a nice little leg. Remember, the demonstration here is uh, the actual software. The demonstration is not the aircraft. I've done this one before, which is kind of a shame because I messed up one already. Oh, well. There we go. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Level off a little bit here. here. One of the things I liked about X-Plane is if you want to look out this window, you go click, click, and now you're looking exactly out this window, so it makes it super easy. Pull that throttle back a little bit. I'm going to pop that last notch of flaps in. I do one of these things. We're quite on the high side, but that's okay, because it was the nose right now. And that should do it right there. And down we go. Good. 
good, looking good. Still way too fast, but that's okay. I can just coast it. Laps are set correctly. I don't have speed brakes on this thing. Just gonna line myself up at the end of the runway. Nose is starting to get a little heavy. Typical of Pipers. All right, come over the end of the runway. Nose is getting real heavy now. Enjoy that ground effect, that sweet, sweet ground effect. And we're down. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and uh, stop this airplane here. I'm gonna hold down my brakes, hop on the emergency brake, and come to a complete stop. So now what we're gonna do is open up Google Earth. All right, Google Earth is running and ready, ready to rock. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna press file, I'm gonna press the open option real quick. We're gonna make our way over to our desktop and there's our file. So if I click this sucker, check this out. <laughs> Look at that. So you can actually see a recording of your entire flight. As you're seeing it, you can see how absolutely do do some of my flying here was. Well, like I said, that was not the point. The point was just to kind of demonstrate the concept. Now, one of the neat things is you can actually record in Google Earth. So I can actually back time up and you can see exactly how bad I did. So you can see this uh, crosswind leg became more of a downwind leg. Then I kind of got my downwind thing going and then I started coming around and then I popped myself there. One of the cool things is you can actually press this button. You can uh, watch me fly the entire flight, which again, we just saw that in woohoo! <laughs> You can see me zipping around like that. And then the neat thing too is each one of these points is actually discrete. So you can click on it and it will actually have metadata that allow you to see exactly what was going on. Enjoy.